Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now kneeling or standing as you are able, let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Thanks be to God. And now let us join together and pray together Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scornful. They delight in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which in the wind blow away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is greatest? And he said to him, You shall love your Lord with all your God with all of your heart with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is the end to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they said to him, The son of David. And he said to them, How is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord shall said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put my enemies your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? 
no one was able to answer, to give him an answer. Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. So, you guys have heard me preach a handful of times now. Six or seven, something like that. And probably six or seven times you've heard me talk about this particular scripture. So, you know, that is kind of at the center of how I approach preaching, honestly. In all of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus says this pretty clearly, almost in the same words. In John, he says it as well, but it's a little bit different. It's a little more muddied, but that's how John is written, to be honest. But I think that when something is repeated, one gospel to the next, it's important. So what is it saying here? So we know that Jesus is often challenged by the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the religious folk of the time, the folks that wore the funny clothes. And this time, they ask him, so what's the most important law? Now we know that this is a string of religious leaders trying to trip Jesus up, right? So Jesus says to them, he quotes scripture. So love your God with all of your heart and all of your mind and all of your soul is a a, a scripture from Deuteronomy. So it's one of the laws that are written in Deuteronomy. Now, I I think I'm going to expand on this just a little bit. So the translation there is really hard because it uses a few very unusual words. When it says here, love God with all of your heart, it's actually saying more about your physical being, all that you are, all that you physically are. Love God with all of your mind and your soul, that's actually talking about your spirituality, like all those things that make you you, the way you think, that thing that is unknowable kind of inside of you that makes you you. So love God with all of your physical being, love God with all that makes you you. And the last one is really unusual because the last word actually means much or greatness or overflow. So it's actually saying, love God with all of your physical being, love God with all that makes you you, and, make, and love God with all that makes you great, all of your greatness. And we lose that in the translation, but I think it's important. And we'll, you'll, you'll hear why in a second. And then he goes on to quote something from Leviticus. And we had the Leviticus reading today, didn't we? Those are two very different books. They're both books of law, and both books of law that the Sadducees and the Pharisees would have known very, 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 very well. And Jesus is saying, all the law... Everything that you read, every dot and diddle in there, everything that you've heard from the prophets, all should hang on these two things. Love God with everything that you are and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, how do we do that? What does that look like in the real world? Right now, it's kind of hard, isn't it? We're pretty divided as a nation right now. And I don't care what political leaning you have, what side of the aisle you're on, who you're voting for. It's hard to have a conversation about any of that right now. We are so divided. So what does it look like to love the neighbor that you don't particularly like today? Because that's what we have to do. We have to love our neighbor. Because if we love God, then we love our neighbor. And if we love our neighbor, then we love God. So what does it look like? Well, so about four years ago, three, four years ago now, I found myself spending a month in Myanmar, in Burma, what used to be Burma. And I was getting ready to go off and preach a sermon in a skirt barefoot in the jungle. That's a sermon for another time. I'll get there, I promise. And on the way there, 
the bishop took me to this church. Now, this church was surrounded by literally grass huts, like huts that these, the, the families had built themselves. And when we pulled up to this church, it was a proper brick church. I mean, it's something that you would see here. So it was kind of, it stood out. So when we got there, the bishop introduced me to a man, his name was Sa Nikamwi. And that basically actually translates to Mr. Smiley, which I love. So Mr. Smiley, Mr. Smiley Sa Nikamwi, it ends up that he built that church. Now, when I say I, he built that church, with his two hands, he gathered the bricks, he laid the mortar, he put the bricks on top of the mortar, and built a proper church. But he wasn't done. He actually built another building off to the side that became the community center, where they taught young parents how to be parents. And uh, they did a whole bunch of classes there about the community, how to help the community. Sa Nikamwi was a humble man. He was a tiny little guy who built a church. He didn't have any help from the diocese. It was one of the proudest things that the bishop had to say, was he did this all by himself. And why did he do it? Because he loved his neighbor, and he loved God. He so loved God that he knew that the community needed something more. He so loved his neighbor that he knew that they needed something more. So he built a church. <laughs> wow. That kind of commitment seems a little overwhelming, doesn't it? But God has made you great. Last week we talked about being made in the image and likeness of God. And that means that we're designed to love. We talked about being made in the image and likeness means that we are made to love. But it also means we are made to be loved. And that in itself is the greatness You are great beyond measure. You are God's creation. And you are built to love and be loved. And that may sound a little mushy, but it ain't. Because love, done right, is hard work. Because you've got to love that neighbor that you don't like very much. And the thing is, when, when you do that, when you really love with all of your heart and your mind and your soul, all of your physical being, all that makes you you and all of your greatness, we build the kingdom of God here and now. Not something after we die, but here and now, we have a chance to make everything better. And I know that feels overwhelming, that it's our responsibility to make everything better, but it is. See, Christ came to teach us a better way, and that better way is to love with everything that you are. And it's work. But that's why we come to church, because we don't do it by ourselves. We come to this communion rail behind me every week to fill our tanks so that we can go out and do that work. I'm not asking you to go out and build a church. I mean, if you want to, maybe. But I am asking you to love with everything that you are, even when it's hard. So the homework this week, do a random act of love. Let love show forth, maybe anonymously, but do something 
from your heart that is love made manifest. And coming to the rail today, brothers and sisters, that will give you the strength to get there. That will give us all the strength to make the kingdom of God real. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, let us profess our faith, standing or kneeling as you are able. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I now invite your own prayers of thanksgiving or intercession silently, aloud, or for those online in the comment section. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. 
Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And And now, at a distance, let us share the sign of peace. 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 Peace, 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 peace. Peace to everybody online. All right, everybody, please be seated. I know that um, if, I haven't actually seen what peace looks like here pre-COVID, but I suspect it takes an hour. I I can see that already. So, um, welcome, and we are doing communion today. Yay! So, um, if you were here last week, we'll do it the same way we did last week. Um, If you were not here, what's going to happen is I will receive, and then I will lather up my hands real good with hand sanitizer, and then I will bring the bread down. So we're just receiving in one part. Um, And if you want to receive, just like you were at the rail, put your hands out. If you do not want to receive, um, put your hands over your chest, and I'll keep my distance. I want to make sure that everybody feels safe in that way. Um, And, oh, the wagon out front. I hope everybody saw that. So we are doing the Thanksgiving collection, which is exciting. And uh, like I said earlier, we're trying really hard to figure out ways to do all the things that we should be doing. may look different, but that's what we're doing. Matter of fact, we had a very long conversation about uh, lessons and carols, how we're going to do that. We're going to do it. Don't know what it looks like, but we're going to do it. So, um, Kathy, anything? No? All right. Thumbs up. Ushers, how did everything go? Thumbs up. Technology, good. Thumbs up. All right. I think that we are in a good and right place then. All right, let's do this thing. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life, and you made us in your own image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and with archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, you and your infinite love made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death and resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all of your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ lived for you. He died for you and came again for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Did you get one? Did you want one? No, okay. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May you go into the world in peace, knowing that you are ever walking in his grace. Blessing of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.
Our worship has come to an end. Let our service now begin. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.